Just a warning to you all, this video will have to be broken up into two parts, so bear with me. Um, I hope that you watch both of them, and I hope that in some capacity, this was helpful. Okay, uh, <laughs> I hope I could do this, because I'm actually, wow, I'm actually nervous. I, it's really silly, but I'm trying to answer a question that I get asked, asked all the time, and that is how does one get into collecting vintage fountain pens? What are some tips and tricks and information that I can share with you guys to help some of you get started? And it's really tricky because I feel like it's just a very, very many layered, complicated, mysterious thing that I'm still like kind of in the dark about, to be honest. And my biggest tip, <laughs> is to take a leap of faith and just do it. And that is what how I approached the whole thing. I think I got my first vintage fountain pen, maybe it was three years ago, I think it was 2017. And yeah, I'm pretty sure. Anyways, it was something that I had wanted to do for many years. And one day I was just finally like, I don't know what it was that the, the little switch was was flicked and I was like okay I'm just gonna do it I'm just gonna take a leap of faith I'm gonna jump into the deep deep end of the pool and hope that I can swim because it's an expense it's a huge risk you don't know if you're gonna like the pen you don't know if it's gonna break on you you don't know like if if it needs to be repaired or restored or how to care for it or maintain it and it's just it's a lot and it's really overwhelming. Um, and it's still a lot and there's still so much that I don't know, which is partly why this question is so hard for me to answer. Um, because I really did just Leroy Jenkins it, I think is the expression where you just run into like a, a mob of <laughs> creatures that are trying to kill you and you just like hope that you can survive. Um, that's what it felt like a little bit for me. Um, one of the things that I did do when I started getting into vintage fountain pen was I googled everything. Just random questions like, how do I get into vintage fountain pens? Top three vintage fountain pens. I don't even remember. What are some vintage fountain pens that every collector should have? Uh, YouTube as well. I was watching a ton of YouTube videos and just trying to like cultivate and accumulate as much information as I possibly could. And the information is, is that's out there, I'm still like in the dark about because some of it is really, really dense. And then some of it just doesn't seem to exist at all. I think that there is a lot of lost information on some pens. Uh, maybe there's also some information that's withheld because collectors don't want to share their secret stash. <laughs> um, and yeah, so it's just kind of like all scattered out everywhere. Um, let me just share with you an experience uh, because I think that's a part of it. This beautiful, beautiful baby was my very first vintage fountain pen. This is a Schaefer oversized balance pen. This was my very first vintage fountain pen and not at all the style that I had in mind. I don't even know what I had in mind, to be honest, at that point. Um, I think I thought maybe something petite and tiny and graceful and slender and gilded, I don't know. <laughs> but I, this was the one that just called to me and I don't, I can't tell you why. It's huge, it's a strange torpedo cigar shaped pen. So, something that happened to this poor, poor baby and I really miss this pen and I would like to get it restored again, if I can. Uh, so I was carrying it around in a pen loop of a traveler's notebook. And at the time it was an A5, very heavy, fully packed notebook. And it was also my wallet. And so I was out in about in the world and I pulled it out to pay for something and fumbled the whole contraption completely and the notebook fell on top of the pen and the pen fell on the tile cracked right down the middle and I was devastated 
I remember like holding back tears. <laughs> oh my God, what have I done? My, my child has just died. So anyways, uh, flash forward, I don't know, a couple months and I'm in an art store, Sarnoff Art Supplies here in Tucson, and they sell, they have vintage fountain pens there. And so I was telling the guy about this, my experience, and he's like, oh, I have my buddy uh, who sells our, the, the, the pens here, he restores them. So let me call him up and see if this is something he could fix. So he explained to the gentleman what had gone wrong. And sure enough, the guy was like, yeah, I could fix that. And so I left my pen at the art store that day. Uh, it cost $45 and he did fix it. Now, I think this was a gesture of kindness, but he also proceeded to tune the nib without um, any sort of um, communication. So he just did it, I think, because he was just being nice uh, and he tuned the nib and did a fine job, but it completely altered the experience of the pen. The crack was fixed, but the pen didn't write the same. It was really smooth. And before it had just the right amount of feedback where I felt like I knew I was making contact with the page, which I really liked then and I still like now, but not as much. Um, and so I was just really devastated because the whole like personality of the, the nib, the writing experience was completely altered. So I put it away for a long time. I didn't go back to it for months, but I would think about it often because I really liked this pen. And so finally I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna get reacquainted and I'm gonna make it work. We're gonna, I'm gonna learn about how this nib writes now and I'm gonna enjoy it because I love this pen. And so I did, I wrote exclusively with it for a couple of weeks. Um, my favorite ink was Diamine Oxblood in this or the Diamine Sherwood Green. I really like those heavy saturated pigmented inks, really intense colors, um, dark colors that just seem to be such a good fit for this pen. And I would really love to fill it up with either of those colors right now. <laughs> um, so anyways, yeah, and I, I ended up getting accustomed to the way it wrote, uh, but it did change it. Um, and then eventually the crack came back just because I think it was just, it's just too much of a, um, yeah, it's just too, unfortunately, it's, it's at a really like important part. This is where the pressure bar is. This is the pressure bar that sits inside. This is the lever on the outside. When you pull that lever, it squishes the pressure bar so that it squishes down the rubber sack. So you can, it's kind of cool because you can actually see how this particular pen works. Um, that was another thing that I researched a lot of, like did the different filling systems because there's so many different filling systems in a vintage fountain pen. There's the eyedropper, there's the button filler, there's the lever filler, there's the um, the vacuum filler, there's, the, <laughs> there's just like a billion different filling systems. So that's important to know too, so you know what you're getting into. Um, that you can, you know how to fill up your pen once you get it. Um, another thing that was helpful, I think I found a site, it was like the top five pens that you, every vintage fountain pen collector should have in their collection. And it was like the Waterman's 52 and a half V, which I ended up getting. Uh, the Parker Duofold of some kind, like Parker Duofold Deluxe or Lucky Curve, the Juniors, the standard size wall pens especially if you wanted to have a flex pen, a wall number two has a great flex. Uh, so that's really helpful. And then of course the Schaefer's, 